Hello everyone, welcome to another video talking geeky stuff. And from this little gift, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's Predator, but not the original Predator, of course. It's gonna be my thoughts and a bit of a re review of the new Predator Prey. So I just finished this about a couple hours ago now. Um, Hulu, so it's still pretty fresh in my mind. So, but before we go ahead with this, there will be spoilers, so spoiler alert. Uh, you have been warned. Three, two, one, here we go. Like most of my recommendations or my thoughts videos, I like to play the trade in the background. And most of the time it gets copyrighted, but hey, I don't make any money in the way. And I'm going to switch off the volume, which I forgot to. <laughs> Should have done that earlier. But anyway, it's my thoughts and a quick review. So, if any of you watched my previous videos where I did a video about Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, early this year, and I talked about how much I loved Predator 1987, one of my favorite action movies of all time. Probably number two best Arnold Schwarzenegger films. It's always it's either Predator or Terminator 2. That is my best Arnold films. So yeah, Predator has not been, oh, not just mine, I think it's a lot of people's favorite films. It's not action-packed, amazing cast, amazing action, special effects for its time, makeup effects, the Predator design was amazing, you know, and yeah, 20th Century Fox tried to make a franchise out of it a few years later. They did the uh, Predator 2, which I actually thought was alright. You know, I didn't mind it. It didn't live up to the first one. But to be honest with you, I didn't think anything could really. I mean, it was set, what was it, 1997 in LA. So it was seven years in the future when the film was released back in 1990. No, I didn't mind it. Danny Glover was pretty cool. I still would have you know, had a bit different cast myself, you know, just always saw Danny Glover as the kind of older man in Lethal Weapon. And then you had other Predators that didn't really live up to the, you know, the franchise. You had uh, Aliens vs Predator, which the funny thing was I actually hated it when I first uh, watched it. But now when you watch it again, it's actually pretty fun, as in fun, as in bad fun, you know. Not amazing fun, so it's not fun to watch. Then they did uh, Predators back in 2010, which not bad again. And The Predator 2018, which I actually pretty liked, you know, you had its problems. Uh, the 11 foot Predator was a uh, hmm, you either like it or you didn't like it. And now we're here Predator, Prey on Hulu, and I've always said this to my friends, it's like, I would love to see like a, a big budget TV show. And I said this 20 years ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago, before streaming was so big and before TV had you know, movie bud budgets where they can make like an hour episodes where, you know, it doesn't have to continue, you know, where the predators will come down on earth in different timelines. You know, I mentioned the samurai area, romance of the three kingdoms ever in China, you know, the knights of the Templars area. You know, medieval times, Roman times, the, you know, during the gladiators, you know, like the gladiators, gladiators, I mean. And then, of course, I even mentioned things like um, fighting Native Americans and so on. And here we are, you know, set in the 17, um, 1700s in America, North America, the Comanche Indians. So, you know, it, it, so I kind of called it <laughs> nearly 20 years ago now. Um, so before I started this, 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 um, the quick you know, movie review. I spent some time already just introducing the Predator franchise. Um, I read some articles online and some posts saying this is a bit of a woke movie because, you know, during that period of time in the Native, Native American culture, you know, women wasn't allowed to hunt and so on and so forth, right? And I'm not a, an expert in this kind of culture, to be honest with you, so I can't judge. But I suppose it's right. I mean, in, back in the day, most cultures are kind of like that, where you know women would probably stay at home, you know, doing the the cooking, the weaving, 
the plants and things like that and then the men go out hunting and and so on so there was a lot of talk about that but as I said, I'm not a big expert on the Comanche Indian culture, so you know, couldn't judge. So I watched it, you know, open-minded, and first thing I said when I watched it, I loved the, the scenery. I really liked the setting, you know, in, in nature. And I loved, there's a scene where she kind of walks home about 10 minutes into the film. It's kind of like one shot, the camera kind of follows her from behind the shoulders to camp campsite or the you know the village site where all these kind of like um teepees were set i really loved that that scene and uh, the top down view to show the nature of you know, north america the natural streams i actually like the kind of color as well it's not too bright not too dull it's just right you can see it's kind of coming in autumn coming to like the november period doesn't really say i loved all that you know i like the atmosphere i even like the soundtrack as well the soundtrack is really kind of subtle you know, maybe in the background, you know, sometimes when his action picks up, he has that kind of boom, boom, boom. And use a lot of uh, like a Native um, American kind of sounds. So I really like that. I like the actress as well, um, Amber, I can't remember her surname. She plays a character called Naru. And, um, you know, she goes out picking herbs or plants. And she kind of runs off, tries to hunt, practices her axe. And that was a pretty good scene the way she throws axes and you can see they put a lot of effort in that kind of training, the actors is, actors and actresses. Um, so you now watching that I'm thinking, okay, it's good. I like the, the, the build up as a subtle build up, you know, I love the relationship with the dog. She has a dog. I think the dog's name called Salu or something like that. I'm just gonna call Dog Dog. I can't remember the name. And then she catches up with her brother and a band of them. And this is a bit where I kind of felt a little bit annoyed. Um, I know, you know, this is about kind of empowering women, you know, this day and age, and, and I'm, I'm all for it, you know. If a character is written right, I'm all for it. But I don't like the way that, how do you say it, they made the guys kind of a bit of an arsehole, all of them. I mean, the brother, uh, uh, his name was Tabby, Tabby, Tibe, Tabe, something like that. Apologies if I pronounce it wrong. He was cool, you know, the older brother, you know, being older brother, you know, he looks after his sister, but at the same time, he's sort of like a leader, so he has to kind of showcase that as well. So I kind of torn between things like that. Uh, I just didn't like the fact that it made the guys, the males, quite dicks, you know, a bit of an arsehole, things like that. And I mean, this is a film that has you know, a big emphasis on Native American people, Comanches, and the setting is amazing. I felt they could have spent more time on building the culture, building the people, the relationships, because at the end of the, end of the film, I didn't even remember anybody's names. Seriously. Even later on when you see a bunch of the French people in there, I didn't remember any of their names. Um, not because, you know, I'm not rec I don't recognize Comanche names, but I didn't remember any names except for hers and maybe the dogs, if I pronounce it right. And I felt that this is a film where, you know, it has great cultural reference behind it, you know, great scenery. I love the costume, I love the weapons they use, you know, even the medicine, stuff like that was very, um, I really liked it, I really enjoyed it. They should have focused more on that culture. Uh, the curves, why would they do this, you know, the, the meaning of hunting, you know, just trying to get to know the characters better. Um, but instead, it just focuses on, you know, the Naru, the main the main, um, the main hero, really. And, you know, there's a few scenes where she has a hand-to-hand -hand combat with some uh, guys, and I did like the, the very cool combat, you know. I think very choreographer for that was really good. They love the use of the axe, the knives, the weapons they use, the arrows, some of the way they're hunting, the way they're running, and the camera sweeps past. And I thought that was really good. Anyway, so these are only some of the grabs I have. Is just I felt that they could have focused more on the culture. This is a good opportunity to really focus on you know the Native American culture. Instead, 
they made most of the guys, if not all of them, dicks, you know, except for the brother. And anyway, let's focus on the Predator itself. I actually like the Predator design, you know. Um, I like the fact that they, because this was set, like I said, set 300 years before the first movie. So um, the technology, even though they're probably, you know, the Predator culture is kind of a mixed, kind of tribal, but also had more advanced technology than our own. So it's a combination of both, right? That is their culture and their life. But I like the fact this Predator, predator looks more more wild, more um, barbaric, you know. Uh, it doesn't use, like, the cannons in, you know, the first movie. It, it still has a laser sighting, you know, which is cool. Almost like uh, the arrows, it has the famous claws, uh, a bit longer. I like the, the mask he wears. It's almost like a, a, a crane, you know, like a like a skull. Um, the face was pretty cool. Uh, I like the hair. It wasn't so much like dreadlocks. It's more like long, you know, thick, thick hair, you know. I like just like the image of the Predator. His skin is more scaly, it's darker. It's much more tribal, I felt. Um, I like the way the Predator really shows up, start hunting things like uh, a wolf, and then the bear scene was pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, the CG could have been better. I mean, considering this is for streaming, it wasn't a full-on um, cinematic release, so the budget was probably wasn't there. I mean, it still looked pretty. It still looked pretty good for a TV show for the special effect. I like the fight with the bear. I think that was a good fight because it shows. Because you know, even when I was watching you know, the original Predators, I was thinking how. We all know the predators around the seven foot mark, right? How strong are they? You know, you know, probably in in my mind, probably about as strong as ten Arnold Schwarzeneggers or something like that. So fighting a bear really kind of like showcased the strength of a predator because it took it out single hand without. I don't think it used any weapons; it's just a full on fist fight. And we know how strong a grizzly bear is, right? You know, so. A grizzly bear stands on his two legs, it's like what nearly eight foot. So, I like the showcase of that, and I love the way he uses his camouflage that really good, you know, trademark really famous for that um, camouflage. And he knows you now that when he starts to start to hunt people, where Naru gets captured by the no, I won't say captured, but you know, stopped by the group of um, native Comanches because the brother. You know, told him to take her home, worry about her. You know, the scene when she has a little fight with one of the guys and then she gets tied, you know, tied up and then the predator come. I like the way that, you know, the Indians, the, I can't remember, like I said, I don't remember the names, one with an arrow, one with a spear, and they was fighting. They was holding their own pretty well. They didn't run off. Really showcased that, you know, that how brave they were. They didn't run off, you know, they was willing to take a chance in a fight. And it, you know, you know, you knew they were going to die. So, yeah, another another thing as well, I thought that this film was very predictable. You knew that, you know, whichever person I saw, okay, he's going to die, he's going to die, he's going to die, he's going to die. You kind of knew all that. And, yeah, and then there's a, and one thing about that, um, Nalu is, is, what I like about it, she's she's learning. She's not like a Mary Sue. You know, you see her practicing an axe, practicing an arrow. She messes up, she learns from her mistakes. She's very really focused and really kind of observant, observant in a way, the bit where her, her, her tribes are getting slaughtered, right? And someone knocks the, or was it during the French scene, knocks his mask up where the laser sighting in, and you notice whenever he fight, the predator fires like an arrow or something, it will, the laser sight guides it to that point. So she picks up pretty uh, quick and she uses that, you know, the technology against him at the end. Anyway, then moves on, she runs off and then she gets captured by a bunch of French um, settlers or whatever they are, I can't remember, no, they were there to hunt. You know, they ask her to um, to help her, help them, I mean, help them hunt them. And you, lo and behold, you found that they captured her brother and they tied them both to the tree for as bait. And then the what followed was a pretty good scene. They had kind of tied them up in the forest where it seems like being burnt, you know, a lot of ashes and things are flying everywhere. And <clears throat> so um, the predator's walking close and you see the French were laid, laid in wait and there's, you know, what triggers a pretty good battle scene. 
and it's you no know, with all the scenes with the predator i really like because it shows kind of like every time you see the predator hunting or in an action scene it goes to the next level you know you see hand to hand combat the, you know, the, the claws uses his gadgets you know there's certain tactics that the predator uses so he moves up a notch so i like that and then things happen you know then um they escape and there's a bit where she goes back to the french french uh camp to save the dog and what follows another pretty good good battle because uh Nalu separates from her brother her brother goes and gets a horse she goes and saves the dog and then what follows was uh one of the french guys survived i think he had his feet chopped off so you know you know begs her to uh fixes him puts in a, a flower oh yeah missed the beginning bit when they were actually before they was hunting for the predator there was a mountain lion on the loose and one of their tribal men was kind of lost so they all went that's it all went to kind of find him and she follows him so i'm kind of backtracking a bit but i probably let her stay because she's good at medicine and you know she had all this herb put it on her, his wounds gave him some sort of weird plant to eat that to kind of slow his temperature cool him down a bit anyway but you know, her medicine saved the guy so going back to where i was earlier on where the french guy had his leg chopped off or his feet chopped off she saves him um, makes him eat the same plants at the beginning and then the predator come and then you see the view from the predator you know the famous um infrared or the heat signature couldn't see the french person lying there only when he steps on him by accident then you know stabs him and then the french guy dies that's when uh now they realize oh the plants lowers the temperature so the predator can't see you so uh, she uses that later on what follows a pretty good scene because um the brother comes in you know horse uses like arrows flying around using his you know the predator spear stabbing through shoots him a couple times i got like i gotta say though i do like the predator where he he or she, I'm not even sure what, what, what gender the Predator is. The Predator has, it's not invincible like the original Predator. Because if you look at Predator 1 and Predator 1 and 2, Predator can get really get injured in, or even hurt until that near the end. This one, you actually see the Predator as you get bit by the wolf, you know, a bit scuffled by the bear, even when the French attack him, you got a couple of bullets in him, arrows through him as well. And... Tabe, the brother, you know, got a couple of good shots and used a spear stab right through the predator, shot his leg, shot his arm. So the predator was pretty wounded and and, and, and the predators do had a lot of fight. So that really showcased how tough the predator was in this. And you can see the predator was, like I said, was more tribal. So it didn't have any that much body armor. Unlike the other predator films, this one was pretty bare skin, just like a, you know, like a caveman with a kind of shorts or something like that very tribal so it really showcase how tough this predator is then you know then the brother gets killed and tells the uh, sister to run so he gets kind of pierced through the back and lifted up pretty um iconic i suppose she runs off and then um, she plans to fight she uses that um oh she found one of the french guys still alive and reverse and uses him as a bait she eats the plants and make her kind of like her body temperature cool so she can't the predator can't see and then what followed was a pretty decent fight she jumps on the back you know axes him a few times she gets a good good few uh, blows in and i think that in the middle part where you see naru fights with the tribes and tribal men and the french you can see her hand-to-hand -hand combat skills that kind of builds up to what she does with the predator you know she can handle herself this is also a good fight as well but at the same time i was a little bit disappointed because the predator um i know he's injured there's a scene where you know he's patches himself up heating himself up but i just felt that if you watch every single scene where predator is in action the predator is really kind of cunning and quite um tactical but with the fight then i felt it was a bit um a bit lazy it looked good fist you know and what what i'm not i'm not taking any any of the, anything away from now the actress i just felt that this predator could have been a different predator because 
I just felt that this predator was a bit stupid compared to what this you know, the predator did just a day before, you know, taking out the whole French the whole French squad with guns and traps, bear traps, you know, knives and everything like that. So if the predator can outsmart them and take them all out and the tribal tribal men, this is where I think that the kind of woke bit comes in. It's like, well, all the men can't do it, you know, but this little girl can. You know, she weighs, what, 80, 90 pounds. Like I said, i got nothing against that. I think she's a great, and I, you know, during the whole film, she learns from the mistakes. She's not a Mary Sue. You know, she learns, she gets experience, and it shows, and during the whole film, it shows you how she can handle herself. Yeah. But the predator, one-on-one, -on -one, no one could, no human being could take him. Simple. And I felt this predator, you can you can probably say that the predator was kind of being too arrogant and underestimated her. Yeah, you can probably say that. But I didn't see the action, you know, for the whole, the whole film. I mean, the predator went in multiple times where he was trapped and he outwitted them through strength, uh, fighting skills, weaponry and so on. I don't understand how the predator, um, you can argue, like I say, it could be he was like, getting arrogant, but at the same time, he just went through battles that was traps. If I was a predator, I would probably think this is another trap, you know, be prepared for it. So, um, and then of course, the, she led him to the place where at the beginning of the, beginning of the film, or the middle of the film, where she gets trapped into like a quicksand and she traps him here. And I like the way she puts the helmet in like a direction. And, and suddenly when he pulls out his um, sort of like a bow and arrow, no, no, like a arrow gun or something like that. And the laser shoots him on the side. You know, the laser guided it to the predator's head. That, and I felt that was very reminiscent of um, the ending of Arnold Schwarzenegger where he's at the back, where his body is back to the log. He's urging the predator to come forward so he can kick the little uh, branch so the big log will fall him, you know, fall on him. Which reminds me of that a lot. And I can see that the director really took care of respecting the previous movies, especially the first one. So I overall, I thought it was a decent movie. Um, if I was to give it a rating, I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. So it's better than better than Alien vs Predator. I think it's, ooh, I would say it's kind of on a par with Predator 2. Uh, better than Predators, I thought, 2010. I actually enjoyed the, the Predator in 2018. I did enjoy it, even though it was, you know, you can, I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I actually thought it was fun. But this is actually really good. Um, but then again, it didn't have any high benchmarks, really, to be honest. I hope this would be a good start of a Predator franchise, you know, kind of like a movie. But in every movie, it's in a different setting. Hopefully, do a samurai one or maybe ancient Rome or medieval England or somewhere like that. I think they could do more of this, and I hope this does well. So 6 out of 10. So I think it's just a bit above average. A few issues, like I said, um, the male or the men look dodgy. Uh, crap, assholes. I don't mind them making a French one because no, back then the French come over there was literally terrorizing the Native American. But the tribal men, you know, her tribal men, I thought they could have been. I don't know. They, I felt this film could have spent a bit more time, maybe 10, 20, 10 15 minutes longer where they could focus a bit more about the culture because I was actually getting intrigued by the Comanches and so on. Also, another thing as well. It felt a little bit weird. I know it, it was in English, you know, just for the wider audience, but there was a few scenes where they spoke in their native tongue. It's like, well, you're going to speak in your own language, then English, then back. Kind of felt weird. No, I felt, I felt that they could have done maybe what Mel Gibson did. Mel Gibson did on Apocalypto, made it for Comanche the language, and having English subtitles. I would have loved that. Hopefully, they may do that in the next film. Can you imagine set in Rome or something like that, where they will be just in the Roman language or something like that? That'd be amazing. Anyway, like I said, six and a half out of ten. I liked it. Not amazing. Go and watch this. 
let's hope there are more of them to come. And thank you for watching. And please do subscribe for more talking geeky stuff. Until next time, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. And please stay safe. Goodbye.